Welcome to our lecture on line. Now that we've learned a bunch of things about line integrals, we learned about the fundamental theorem of line integrals, and we learned some conditions for checking to see if the vector field is indeed conservative or not, now we're ready to do a very good example, a more solid example, of how to utilize the fundamental theorem of line integrals. So let's review a few things. First of all, let's say that we have a vector field F, which is given by this. And we've seen this before in video number 42, and we realize that this is indeed a conservative vector field. And then we realized on the one of our conditions that if F is a conservative vector field, then there's a function F such that the gradient of the function equals that conservative vector field. And we learned how to find that function F. And in, in video number 42, we did for this particular vector field, and this was the function f, in such a way that when we take the parcel of this function with respect to x, and the parcel of this function with respect to y, we get the x and the y components, the i and the j components of our vector field. The fundamental theorem, theory of line integrals tells us that the gradient of that, which has to be equal to the vector field f, so we could actually replace this by the vector field f, dot dr is equal to, and of course we can put it in this format, so instead of dr, we can write as dr prime, the derivative of r, of a, what we call parametric variable t, and we know that that must be equal to the function, this function right here, evaluated at the end point, minus this function evaluated at the initial point. So instead of actually doing the line integral, we can find this function and then simply evaluate it at the end point, the initial point, and then we actually, in essence, evaluated the line integral. So that's what we're going to do here with our specific example. We're going to evaluate the line integral, but using the theorem of, of the fundamental theorem of line integrals, and the path is given by the vector r which is defined right here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to evaluate that vector r at the end point b and at the initial point a. So let's go ahead and do that. So the, um, the vector r where t is equal to b, that would be the end point, and of course t equal to b, that would be t equal to pi. So this is equal to r, evaluated at t equals pi. And since our function is right here, we're going to plug in pi for every t. So it gives us e to the pi times sine of pi in the i direction plus, oh, I need a plus there, plus e of pi times the cosine of pi times the j direction. And right away we realize that the sine of pi is zero, so the i component goes to zero, so this is equal to zero i. And on the j component, this is a negative one, so this becomes minus e to the pi in the j direction. So now we have evaluated our position vector, the end point of the line integral, to be equal to this. And now we're going to evaluate this at the initial location, which is equal to r, when t is equal to 0, because it starts from 0 and goes to pi, and this would be equal to e to the 0 times sine of 0 in the i direction, plus e to the 0 times cosine of 0 in the j direction. Again, we realize that the sine of 0 is 0, the cosine of 0 is 1, and e to the 0 is 1, so this becomes equal to 0 in the i direction, plus 1 in the j direction. So now we have the x and the y components, the x and the y components of our position vector at the end point and at the initial point. So now we go ahead and say this line integral right here is going to be equal to this evaluated. So the function the end point and the beginning point of our line integral, and of course, that's going to have x and y values, so this can be written as the function evaluated at x and y at the end point minus the function evaluated at x and y at the initial point A. So you can also look at it like that. And so now let's go ahead and do that. Let's find our function and plug in the x and y values of our end point 
to get this minus the x and y values of our initial point. So this is equal to f at the end point, so where x is equal to 0 and y is equal to minus e to the uh, or um, minus e to the pi. So that means we're going to evaluate x, f at x equals 0 and y is equal to minus e to the pi. And subtract from that the function evaluate the initial point where x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. So let's go ahead and do that. So here we plug in 0 for x and so that this goes to 0, this goes to 0, and we plug in minus e to the pi for this. So that gives us minus, a minus, because we have a minus y cubed, and y cubed, y would be a minus e to the pi quantity cubed, minus the function evaluated for these two values of x and y. So let's put a bracket here. Plug in 0 for x, these go to 0 again, and then for y we get a 1, so this would be minus 1 to the third power, so that would be minus the quantity 1 to the third power, like this, and now when we simplify that we get the following, this would become e to the 3 pi times a minus times a minus, which is a plus e to the 3 pi, and a minus times a minus 1 becomes plus 1, and this then is the evaluation of our line integral using the fundamental theorem of line integral. So rather than brute force try to integrate that over our path, we can simply use the fundamental theorem and use this method instead. And that's how it's done.